Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Geek Suit, and welcome back to Control Over C, the speed cast. I have to say it in that voice every time, or else I will probably die. And joining us, as always, is our host with the most smegma, that is, Salsa of the Shark. What's poppin'? All I'm going to say is you get paid way too fucking much to be this bullshit. <laughs> Bro, I get paid fucking zero, so zero is, <laughs> it cannot be more than anything. I, I think even you make too much. Oh, uh, whatever. Here's what I got to say to the um, the sinister sultan of smegma. Go fuck yourself, Salsa. Uh, <laughs> but anyways... Oh. Uh, last time, we recommended that our fans commit uh, possible piracy by emulating um, software and games of that nature. And uh, Salsa and I wanted to kind of, we wanted to talk just briefly about that a little bit. Obviously, um, not to say that, you know, you should, but honestly, I think that there should be a larger conversation that gets had with the bigger game companies um, about whether or not, you know, but whether or not it's okay to emulate consoles, you know, there are consoles out there that no longer exist, and there are games out there that essentially no longer exist. Um, you know, they have gotten a, such a such a value because of how rare they are that it's impossible for people like Salsa and I to play them. For instance, if I want to play Resident Evil One and I don't have an emulator, I mean, for lack of a better phrase. I'm kind of fucked. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say rest- you are fucked. More like you should go fuck yourself. In well, the like, words you know, of Nintendo themselves. Exactly. Like the original Resident Evil One. I mean, like seriously, that that's like a collector's item. Like especially like if you get like the director's cut, because there's two versions of Resident Evil One. Not only that, there's actually more versions of Resident Evil One than just the Play- PlayStation One version. Same thing with Re- Resident Evil Two. Resident Evil Two has different versions for PlayStation, for Dreamcast, I think, and for N64, you know. And, for instance, if you get... There's certain versions of Resident Evil 2 that has, like, more modes, like battle mode. So it's like, honestly, there's no way for somebody to enjoy a game to the fullest extent unless they emulate. (laughs) Long story short. It's basically, you either let these games and consoles die or you let, you let the corporations get away with it and sell you the same shit all over again for even more money this time or you just fucking break the chain you go your own way you fucking download an emulator and play whatever games you want because fuck it life's short and why should i not be able to play fucking metal gear solid 1 on a playstation 1 emulator Exactly. I like, mean, what's stopping me right now from going to emulatorgames.net <laughs> and downloading a Project 64 emulator and then downloading Body Heart? Nothing. Or In what's fact, stopping you from going to altstore.io and downloading on your iPhone the altstore, which is a third party software app that allows you to download the app Delta, which allows you to play Game Boy games, game uh, uh, NES, SNES. Uh, any basically Game Boy Color, Original, or Advance, as well as N64 games. Like, what's stopping you? I mean, you can play it on your phone. Well, I- I'm going to tell you what's stopping you right there. Uh, <laughs> for one, iPhone. Fuck off. I- I'm not I'm not saying that I have this, because I don't have this, because that would be wrong. But there is a way to do that. You just have to basically download third-party software um, oh no, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm sure they get what you're saying, and I'm saying you know, hey, fuck it, what's stopping you? Go for it. But exactly. on the other hand, if you own an iPhone, you might as well castrate yourself. Might as well castrate yourself. Okay. To well, put it bluntly. Anyways, if if you want to know Salsa's real feelings about uh, iPhone versus Android, I actually uploaded an outtake last year about the iPhone versus Android uh, dilemma. And it's like an hour long of me and Salsa arguing about iPhone versus Android. So feel free to go watch that because we're not going to argue about it again. Um, but yeah, 
honestly. I, I think there just needs to be a discussion had because these companies really need to realize that emulation is not going anywhere. It's just going to get trickier and trickier for them to stop. I mean, at this juncture, they just need to sell emulation emulators. They need to. They could literally, honestly, you know what I would buy? I would buy a all-in-one PlayStation emulator with a subscription to play essentially any PlayStation IP. Like with the PlayStation 5, they could sell me the PlayStation 5 for even an upcharge if they give me an all-inclusive emulator for all of the other consoles. I would buy that 100%. And is, and I and I'm not going to buy each game individually because I'm not a fucking cuck. You need to give me a subscription service so that way I can subscribe when I want to and play any of the games that I want to play. Because if you try and pull some shit like you need to buy each of these games individually, I'm going to kill myself. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, like I agree. I would happily pay, I don't know, hundred bucks right now if it was just for the software. But then exactly. after that, it needs to have a, I don't know, like fifty free downloads, and then after that, you have to pay either a subscription fee for all the other games or just buy them individually. You know, honestly, I could get on board with that. I think 50 free downloads for unlimited access to any of the IPs from PlayStation 1 to 4 would be good. I, I, think, I think that I... they... Go ahead, what'd you say? I, was saying, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think it is too. I would pay 100 bucks for that. No, no, no cap. On jaw. I would shill out Hundy if you were to give me that 100%. Because why not? You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason why I wouldn't like that. I mean, they create the bullshit. They they, they, they give us essentially the equivalent of the uh, what, what the uh, foreign market sells us. You know, they sell us those, like, plug-and-play games. I mean, they essentially gave us a, a plug-and-play for the PlayStation 1 that has, like, 70 games on it, you know. And yeah, I mean, well. the only thing stopping them is they're still dedicated to this bullshit. Let's load it onto this device, which is literally just a miniature computer, because they don't want us having the ability to run it on our own computers. Exactly. I, I would say, honestly, they could probably even sell the emulator on computer. But I would legitimately, I would buy, like, a PlayStation, like, I would buy a legitimate console if it were an emulator. Because I feel like that'd be pretty cool, like, to be like, yeah, here's my PlayStation 5, and here's the console that I use that I can play PlayStation 1 through 4 on. I feel like that'd be pretty cool to own. But at the same time, I guess that, that also plays into the, well, that'll eventually break down, and that will no longer exist. <laughs> oh, they really do fucking try to dick with you, huh? Yeah, for real, though, they really do. But well, anyways, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, emulation. Honestly, we'll probably talk about this again. And honestly, it, the the whole concept of emulation and emulators, it's honestly a very, it's an interesting conversation. It's a fun conversation to have. But yeah. But actually, I was gonna talk to you, Salsa. I I know that we, uh, me and me and Salsa both like guns, right? Me and Salsa used to play a lot of airsoft, and honestly, if we didn't live so far apart. I would love to go airsoft and with salsa. You know, we have our own builds and everything else, so that'd be pretty cool to do sometime. Um, but me and salsa also like real guns. You know, we talk a lot about guns every, well, not a lot, but you know, we we occasionally will. And uh, one of our mutual friends, um, well, I guess I you could say mutual like associates, um, Jeff has a lot of guns. And before Salsa moved away, we were going to go and shoot guns. Well, sometime when Salsa comes back, we have to go over to Jeff's and shoot some guns because Jeff's got a lot of cool stuff. But the reason I brought this up is I watched this guy on YouTube. His, his name is Matt, um, but he goes, uh, his YouTube channel is called Demolition Ranch. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. I've seen a little bit of their content. Rarely. Dude, Dem- yeah, I say, if you go there, his channel, honestly... It's like a kid, right? As a kid, you think to yourself, oh man, I wonder what would happen if I shot this gun at X, Y, or Z. And <laughs> Already I'm on board. I respect that. Exactly. You know, for instance, he did a thing like, 
oh, what would happen if I, you know, obstructed the barrel of a 12 gauge shotgun with Play-Doh or something like that? Like, that's something I want to know. Like, that's information that I need to know. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, so, what does happen if I do that? Well, long story short, if you put, pack something tight enough into the barrel of a shotgun, it's going to probably explode. Long story short. But <laughs> if you're interested in stuff like that, go follow Demolition Rand. Honestly, super chill dude. Honestly, he's got like almost 10 million subscribers. And, you know, I don't necessarily know his political affiliation, but he does live in Texas. So I imagine he's probably a conservative or conservative leaning. But, you know, he's super respectful about all of that. He's super respectful about like the Internet and everything else. And he's honestly not that much older than you or I. Uh, he might be like 10 years older, maybe, but not like too much. But anyways, um point being is he he, sh- he did a video uh, like last october i think where he has a close quarters 50 bmg rifle Ooh, how do you yeah. make a close quarters 50 bmg dude all right so this this thing this fucking gun all right it is a single shot gun you have to load the round in and it, you so like have you ever seen like a like a single barrel shotgun where you break the barrel and you have to put the shell in, and then you plug it back up. Yes, I right. I, I have seen that. Right, so you, you have a general concept of how that works. So basically, the 50 BMG, it's like a short, it's like a shorter barrel rifle. I would compare it to like a standard Air 15, but a little bit shorter. And basically, the barrel breaks near the trigger guard, and he he you have to unscrew it. It's like a it's like a little cap. And then you put the 50 BMG in, you screw it back, you lock it into place, and it shoots 150 BMG at a time. And it honestly, like, I just think to myself, because he, he shoots a lot of these different guns that are just like random guns. You know, he had like a Barrett 50 cal. You know, he, there was another gun he had the other day that was top loading, but the top loader was like some weird spiral spring mechanism. It was weird. But, anyways. But yeah, this fucking thing is a 50 BMG, it's a single shot, and it is just insane. And I just thought to myself, like, I, I know I don't need that, but I want to buy it. It's only like, I think he said it was only like 500 bucks <laughs> or something like that. A $500 50 BMG. That's what I said, because normally 50 BMGs are 1K plus, and, you know, and a lot, I mean, they're semi, the bigger 50 BMGs, they're semi-automatic. Well, as like, soon even if it is, I say even if it is single shot, that's a fifty caliber rounds hitting you in the chest. Imagine breaking into someone's house and getting fucking shredded by an anti-material round. <laughs> Dude, what, what's the old joke? Like you shoot a nine millimeter, you know, fuck the guy that broke in your house. You shoot him with a five five six, you know, fuck the guy that broke into your house and the guy behind him. You shoot him with a 50 BMG. Fuck those guys and your neighbor's refrigerator. I mean, at that point, you're paying at least 20K in compensation for everything <laughs> behind the dude. Exactly. Well, and, you know, the fun thing is, you know, as I've watched Demolition Ranch, like, honestly, he, he's super informative because he talks about the different rounds, you know, how do bullets work. Because, honestly, if, you, if you're not super familiar with guns, you may not know, like, how bullets work. And not by, not I don't mean like how they shoot, but like what the different calibers mean. So like, for instance, the different calibers don't necessarily mean bigger or better. It just means, for instance, a 50 caliber rifle, it's a big gun, it shoots a big round, and the bullets are fucking huge. And, but the point is that it's a rifle, so the bullet's going to travel farther, faster, and it's going to have a whole lot of penetration. So... <laughs> But, you know, Demolition Ranch is super informed and describes all this stuff to you. Also, he has, um, there are different tips, like different kinds of 50 BMG. He has an incendiary armor piercing 50 BMG round. Like, nothing can stop that. <laughs> you know. I've always thought it would be fun to own a 50 BMG, but ugh, I really don't think I'm man enough to watch a human being turn into paste in front of me. 
<laughs> you're like I've, I, you know, I've, I've never wished to cut a human in half, but a fifty BMG would probably accomplish that. And but like, yeah, so <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I say like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I wouldn't shoot a guy breaking into my house and threatening me and my family. But even I have limits as to how. Mm, come on. How much of a man. how much of a mess you're willing to make in your own? <laughs> yeah, because imagine having to clean that shit up afterwards. Because you mean, know the fair. police ain't going to come in there and just wipe the entire house down. I was going to say, I mean, crime scene may may come in there and they may clean it because they do have like crime scene cleaning people. But you know, something tells me that they're probably not going to be able to find the the chunks of skin on the top of your ceiling fan <laughs> that has got shredded and thrown across the room. But. <laughs> I'm honestly like, so like, I just went to his channel real quick just to kind of give you an example of some of the stuff he does. So, for instance, how many mirrors does it take to stop a bullet? And he starts with like 22 long rifle, the nine millimeter, and so on and so forth. Um, he did, for instance, he did a oh, shooting nitrous tanks. Like, how, how much, how, how big of a bullet does it need to be to just go through a nitrous tank? And I think that he got to like five, he got to five, five, six before it started really causing any damage. Um, he also did, he does a, a few videos where he goes to wish.com and he orders like quote unquote body armor and helmets from wish.com and he tests them to see how well they are, they work. And he always starts like with 22, then nine millimeter, then 45, and then, you know, so on and so forth. But that's honestly my favorite thing that he does is that he like will start out at a smaller caliber move up so that way you kind of have an idea of like different calibers you know how they work and... but uh yeah so anyways um but yeah single shot 50 bmg i bro just absolute fucking Yo, you. There's also. Maybe I think we're maybe having a little Discord issue. I'll say. They are recording device. Uh, uh, it just depends keeps on cutting who, in and out. Who it recorded, but, but yeah. Also, um, what were you saying? Yeah, finish what you were saying first before I start talking more. What was I saying? I have no idea. I couldn't hear you. I was just talking about like the 50 BMG and like all the different shit that this guy does. Like he does oh. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. All I was saying is I've seen some of those videos, mostly stuff like, you know, how, how big of a bullet do you need to penetrate a full steel plate shield? Like, I think he yeah. got up to the, what was it called? Like the 4507 the lever action? Oh, the uh, the 30 out 6. Yeah. No, no, no. No. Let me, let me look it up real quick because I remember it's 45. No, wait, that's not a 4. Fuck. 45 <laughs> dash 70. 45 70. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. It comes out of a lever action rifle. It's, uh, I think it's called something. It's got a different nickname. It's something Express, isn't it? Um, Maybe. What I'm seeing is it's often referred to as 4570 government. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just Googled it. Yeah, that's a mean motherfucker, too. It's a big bullet. <laughs> like, I remember once seeing some company sells an M1 Garand chambered in these. Ooh. <laughs> But then again, I've also seen one. It's uh, chambered in. I forget what it is. It's like those giant uh, magnum rounds for like those. What do you call them? Bear hunting revolvers. Like the like the three fifty seven magnums. No, no, no. Big. Now let me just Google big ass revolver ammo. Well, okay, I'll show you. I have, I have something too to show you. So, like, people who don't know, like, three fifty seven magnums are like are big guns. Like, they're like that's like the dirty Harry gun, like the 
big revolver that shoots like big old fucking bullets. So apparently, their 357 Magnum doesn't just stop at 357 Magnum. There are bigger 357 Magnum bullets. I'm gonna send you this. So like. The, in that video I sent you, I, I think that far right bullet, uh, that picture I just sent you, that far right bullet, I think is a, uh, uh, I think that's just like a normal, I think it's a 45. But the middle bullet is a 500 grain magnum round, and the one on the far left is a 700 grain magnum round. Yeah, it looks about right. So the like, 700 grain, that comes out of a fucking revolver. Can you imagine the kick on that son of a bitch? Well, I mean, the thing is, like, 44 Magnum is the big shit. But that's right. just for standard, like, you know. But then it gets bigger, you know, like the 454 Raging Bull. <laughs> I don't oh, even shit. know what you hunt with that, but... Mm. Basically, it's a revolver so big that it requires a fucking... A scope mount because regularly people use it to hunt long distance bear. <laughs> long distance bear. Yeah, the it it has the four fifty four castle round. Is that what it is? Um, four fifty four. Most likely, yeah, four fifty four. Then there's the five thirteen. That's a chunky boy. Like, at this point, I'm literally just scrolling through a website that is all about, like, the biggest bore revolvers that exist. It's like, you know, and so me and Salsa, we, we, we've both had the same gun experience up to this point. Because we shot a 22, we shot a, we shot t- 22 long rifle out of a handgun and out of a rifle. And we've also shot a 45 caliber out of a handgun, because they, that all belonged to Jay. I was a fan of the uh, 45. Right, and he had that, um, I think they call it um, uh, rat, r- rat rounds or rat shells that have like the uh, pebble, like the like little BBs in it. And like, it's basically, imagine like birdshot, but out of a 45. <laughs> Yo, Salsi, you still there? Oh, there he is. I thought I thought we lost salsa for a second, but anyways. But yeah, yeah I say, uh, I, I give me one second. You just keep riffing on uh, the gun because uh, something quickly came up. I'll be back in like ten seconds, hopefully. Okay. So, anyways, so if you've ever basically, I know we've talked a lot about guns today, guys. So you know, if you're not super interested in guns, I mean, to, truth be told, if you, if you play video games, it's honestly kind of fun to you know, understand the type of weapons that you find in these video games. You know, me and Salsa like to talk about that a lot. And another creator that both me and Salsa uh, like, like actually they do something similar to what we're doing as we're talking about different guns. But um, you can actually go to, and let me find this channel. It's called Kendo Gensha. This guy actually talks about all kinds of weapons from Resident Evil specifically, such as the Samurai Edge, the you know, the Golden Lugers and all the different guns, because, you know, Resident Evil has a bunch of different fucking guns in it. I mean, yeah, it, it, it can be very interesting. But what we were talking about was 45 caliber handguns. Um, 45 caliber is a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger than a 9 millimeter. Um, a mutual friend of ours, Jay, had a 45 caliber Ruger. And the Ruger could shoot different variations of a 45 caliber round, as can any gun that shoots that type of bullet, typically. But uh, specifically, I think they call it rat shot. It's basically like a 45 caliber uh, handgun round, but it has the equivalent of bird shot at a smaller amount in it. And it's like super small, but they, I think they call it rat shot because some people use it to hunt rats. I'm, I, but I feel like you just obliterate a rat and <laughs> you shot that at him. But um, I think a salsa, are you back? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, but do you remember the the rat shot, the little bullet that came in now? Yeah, yeah. You are talking about. I'm pretty sure 45 ACP shot shell. Yeah. I, I, I call it rat shot because that's what uh, Demolition Ranch calls it. I feel I think I think that's what they called it. But yeah, I think called a rat shot. I think that might be something he calls it. But regardless, super cool. 
I mean, it's it's one of those things where, like, you, you don't realize that there's so many variations of typical bullets. Like, you know, 357 Magnums can typically shoot, like, these all these different kinds of Magnum rounds. But they can also shoot, you know, like, for instance, like, the Taurus Bull is a type of Magnum that can shoot these big Magnum rounds. But it can also shoot um, small gauge shotgun shells, like a 10 gauge, if I remember right. Yeah, I remember... Um... We knew a guy who had, and I remember shooting it. It was yeah. a uh, over under self defense pistol that shot yeah. twenty gauge and three fifty seven. Yeah, I remember that because we were with Jay out at his, I think his uncle's farm. I think that was maybe Butch. I don't know, but we were out at his uncle's farm or his like farmhouse or whatever out in the middle of nowhere. And um, his neighbor came over, and he had the over-under uh, breakdown like gun, and it was it could shoot the big revolver around, or it could shoot the ten gauge shotgun shell. And that sound, that motherfucker had a kick. Let me tell you what. <laughs> I, I, I remember uh, you and him, you and Jay, going on about how oh this motherfucker gonna hurt your hand, this motherfucker gonna sting. And then I shot it. I'm like, well, that. I mean. Maybe well, if you I mean, hold it wrong. It, not that it was going to hurt, but it but it is it does have a kick, so it's going to leave your hand stinging for a second. It, it's not going to like leave, like leave any lasting damage or anything. But I mean, it's a it's a very large round coming out of such a small barrel, so it's to be expected that there's a lot of kick. Uh, you know that bullet's coming out at max speed because of how short the barrel is. So there's no, you know, there's no dampening. There's no compensating for that power. So basically you're having to compensate for it. Because if you shoot like a big round like that out of a longer barrel, it has it has further to travel before it breaks out the end of the barrel. So, you know, it's there's a little bit of science that goes into it. And I promise that, you know, it's it's we're not just complaining. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'll but, tell you what I want. I'll tell you what I want to shoot, though. What's that? I want to shoot one of those old M1A1 Thompsons. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say, like, the M1 carbine. <laughs> yeah, the carbine, the Thompson, the Garand. I want to shoot it all, but... Like I don't World know. War II weapons, man. There were so many good weapons during World War II that just looked amazing. I wasn't well, a fan of the version that had the wooden uh, foregrip and the drum magazine, but... That, that's that's more stereotypical. I feel like that's like a stereotypical like mobster gun or something. Kinda, yeah. And I I did not care for that. It's got to have the straight mag and no foregrip. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'd say the um I I would love to shoot like a like an M1A1 like a, like the M1 carbine because that was what replaced the the Garand the M1 or it's I I also I learned this it's not Garand it's M1 Garand because I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly if my history serves me. The person that created the weapon was John Garand, and he named it after himself. So logically, it should be M1 Garand. <laughs> eh, maybe, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I, I could be remembering that wrong. I also watch another guy on YouTube occasionally named Hickok, um, and he, he shoots a bunch of different guns, and he talks about a def- bunch of different... You know, for instance, he did, like, one video dedicated to like the service weapons for our military throughout the years, like starting all the way back at like Flintlock and you know other cap lock pit guns and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and he was talking about the M1 carbine because the M1 carbine th- shoots a 30 carbine around, and 30 carbine rounds pretty big comparatively. But you know, it, those M1 carbines could shoot pretty fast, like the M1 Garin could shoot pretty fast too. Um, but it had a slower rate of fire, and it was a lot heavier than the carbine. So they eventually retired the M1 Garand and replaced it with the carbine. Hmm. But. I will say, there is a pretty good channel, speaking of, you know, gun-related YouTube. Are you about to mention uh, Kendo Gun Shop? Who? Are you, I said, are you, are you about to mention Kendo Gun Shop? I wasn't, but yes, I highly recommend that. He kind of talks about, you know, Resident Evil guns and the real history of them. 
I would say I actually mentioned that while you were gone. I was like, if you want to watch a good YouTube channel other than Demolition Ranch, like we've talked about, Kendo Gun Shop's pretty cool. They talk about a lot of different Resident Evil firearms, which is pretty legit. But what uh, what channel were you about to recommend? I was going to recommend Forgotten Weapons. This fella, he's got... Basically, he covers a lot of guns that are lesser known. You know, like, off the top of my head, I'm looking at... Well, not my head, but my eyes. Looking at his <laughs> channel. And looking at some of the, you know, playlists he has. 13 different videos on the C96 Mauser. Which seems a little excessive. Unless you know that there were so many different versions of the Mauser or the uh, the Red Nine, the, yeah. uh, the just the Mauser, as some people called it. For example, if I'm not mistaken, the original Mauser was called the Red Nine because each uh, grip had a Red Nine inscribed into it. But yep. he he talks about the first version, then the cir- second version, which is uh. They changed a few things, like they removed the the red nine, as well as they changed the iron sights and something else. But he also talks about like the off brands, the Wowser, the joint safety Mauser, the broom handle. It, it's really a great channel for learning about obscure facts. Or <laughs> I don't know where it is, but he had a good section on just guns that made no sense at all, which are hilarious. Like, there's this one he talked about. What was it called? It it was basically a gun in the shape of a rectangle. And it it, it was highly experimental. And I guess the idea was it was meant to be, you could slip it into your pocket, and then when you pulled it out to defend yourself, people would have no clue what it was. And don't get me wrong, you look at it and you have no clue what it is. It just looks absurd. Like, you're just looking at it like, there's no way that thing can fire a bullet. I am just scrolling through this playlist trying to find it, but there are like an absurd amount of playlists that I've never even seen up until now. Must not be a real fan. I just subscribed to him, so I'll have to check him out tomorrow. But uh, while you're trying to find that, there's also a video on Demolition Ranch where he talks about the World War II Liberator. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. The Liberator. Was it like a uh, a dinky little pistol? Yeah, what it was was a, it's a, it was like a sheet metal stamped uh, firearm. It was super cheaply made. It literally fires one forty five caliber handgun round at a time. That's mm. all it does. When, That's good. When, and what it was is that they were um, using it to, um, excuse me, they what they what they do is they were dropping these guns like from airplanes all over like uh, uh, Paris, France. Yeah, um, sounds about right. And and they were doing it because they were trying to provide the peop the uh, the rebellion. They're trying to give them some kind of support. And they're like, obviously, we can't drop, like, you know, M1 carbines because, like, we're going to drop that and the fucker's going to break. Like, but so they found these, like, really small, they made these really small, compact, you know, uh, 45 caliber guns that shot one bullet and they dropped packs of ammo and these. And basically, uh, Demolition Ranch was shooting it and it kept pinching his hand. Every, every time he, because you have to pull it back and it's like a, it's like those uh, shitty airsoft guns that you get where it shoots one BB at a time um, where you have to, like, pull it back. Well, you pull it back, and it fires forward, and it, you know, blasts the cap, and it shoots the bullet. But, like, it kept pinching his fucking hand, and he was like, <laughs> okay, he's like, this is fucking useless, basically. <laughs> but, and yeah. The, cr- <laughs> the craziest thing about that is how many guns out there are just as badly made like, well, I'm going to send you this, the picture of the one I'm talking about. It's called the Zip 22. And Zip 22. Yeah, the USFA Zip 22 long, long rifle pistol. Where did oh I save God. that to? Yeah, I sent you a link to just 
uh, a playlist of all the bad guns this guy's dealt with. This is the Zip 22. This is a pistol. Yeah, I see that. I think I've seen that before somewhere. I think I maybe watched like a video about like I feel like I watched a video at some point about this, but it, it's like a 22, isn't it? Well, yeah, obviously. I I mean, to be fair, <laughs> but yeah, like, that's just fucking shitty as hell looking. It looks too like, dinky. Like you can tell how you're supposed to hold it is you put your fingers, your first two fingers in those slots. Then the palm of your hand is supposed to wrap all the way around that girthy handle and around the butt of the gun. But do you know how you cock this? Let me let me look at it. Do you just do you press the barrel in? Yeah, it's like you see the barrel, there's that little rectangle above it. Oh, that's fucking that's dangerous. Oh yeah, it's real bad. So many people shot themselves doing that. Bro, like, don't get me wrong, like, pe- like, people shoot themselves with, like, normal guns that have, like, normal safeties and trigger guards, and, I mean, people shoot themselves using pretty otherwise safe weapons because they're pretty incompetent, and you're telling me that I have to cock this fucking gun by putting my hand over the barrel? <laughs> Precisely. And the best part is, this thing had aftermarket attachments. Why? <laughs> Well, one of the aftermarket attachments takes care of the uh, the caulking, so you don't have to put your hand over the end of the barrel and shoot yourself. Bro, it's like Apple, like <laughs> selling you AirPods, <laughs> but then selling you like the cord to like, keep your AirPods around your neck. It really who the and the thing is, like, if you watch the video I sent you, they talk about how this gun actually destroyed the company who made it because. Oh yeah, seeing that picture that, you just sent of the Liberator. Yeah, that's the Liberator. That, that fucking thing. It's yeah. But I, I actually I read that. I read that that, that gun that you sent me, the Zip Twenty Two, basically completely fucked the um, they, they fucked the company because I mean the gun's a goddamn liability. <laughs> to put it lightly, I mean aside from having to hold it in a really weird way, it is almost impossible to get the magazine out of it properly. But the magazine look is just so bad. It's like this weird rectangle thing with a rotating... I, I don't know, man. I'm about to send you one, too. And this one, actually, I saw somebody shoot. Um, and honestly, like, this one was, like, pretty legit. Like, it's a uh, it's a folding 9mm. Uh, but but basically, it looks, like a, it looks like a cell phone, essentially. Now, obviously, I, I understand that this has some potentially dangerous a- applications for people who maybe aren't to be trusted, potentially. But uh, let me see if I can get set this to you real quick. Yeah. At the end of the day, the people who are going to commit crimes with guns, they're not the ones buying these guns. They're just going to buy a regular gun and find a way to sneak it into wherever. Right, I mean, and, and I guess that's that's essentially the sentiment that most people had. But so I just sent it to you. So basically, you, you can only load two bullets in at a time, I think, and it, basically you just shoot it like that. It, but it looks like it's supposed to like be able to fit in your pocket, and it, I mean, it's pretty cool. That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Right, it's not supposed to look good. It's honestly, it's just supposed to be very efficient. It's supposed to be like super condensed and. Basically able to, you know, flip out and cap a motherfucker if needed. The thing that I hate most about looking at that piece of shit is how many good-looking folding 9 millimeters there are. Like, there are yeah. actually a good number of them out there that look decent. Like, there's one, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a carbine, and when folded, it literally just looks like a lunchbox. <laughs> nice. Which, again, you know, if you want to, you know, eh, I don't know if that sends the right message. Right. But, I mean, at the end of the day, me and Salsa both like guns. I mean, so, I mean, th- this is this kind of stuff is cool for, for us. Obviously, I, I understand how some people could see an issue with it. You know, me and Salsa are both, you know, I, I, I'll use the phrase, we're both liberal-leaning or left-leaning. I'm more liberal, Yeah, don't, I guess. don't call me a liberal. 
I, I, I'm left, but I'm not a liberal. Don't, don't fucking. That's an insult to my people. Anyways, the point being is that actually speaking of my people, did you see the uh, my ancestry results that I sent you earlier? That I sent in the group chat. I did. I gotta say, ninety eight percent Congo. I was not expecting. <laughs> not. I was one percent uh, Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu, which is all located in Africa. But um, you know, most of my life, I was told that like a good portion of my heritage was Hungarian, like on my on my dad's side. And like only I'm only like one percent. I'm like three percent Eastern Europe and Russia. Eastern Europe and Russia includes like Bulgaria, Hungary, and all of that. But like I'm thirty one percent Scottish and thirty one two percent English, which I I would have never guessed. Like if you, people from Scotland and England are very typically pasty white, and I'm not. I'm very fair skinned. <laughs> I, I have tan, I have not tan skin, but. I don't look like a typical English person or a Scottish person. You know, I'm hesitant about those tests, especially after that scandal that happened. You're about to tell me something about they're collecting our DNA? Oh, I don't care about that shit. What are they going to get out of my DNA? The fact that I'm a pasty white dude who might have like a hint of something interesting in me? (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Now, I'm more hesitant because... There was a company, I forget, was it 23andMe, who did a test like this? Yeah, that's a different company, though. Um, but yeah, they do Yeah, that, but yeah. what they did is what makes me hesitant. I don't know if you remember it, but basically anyone who showed up, or their DNA showed up, you know, primarily Caucasian, they would lie and put... I forget how much, but they would always slip in a certain amount of African in there to trick them. Uh, I don't know why they did this, but it makes me hesitant to believe any company that is willing to tell me my ancestry. Only for the reason that they could lie to me, and how am I going to prove them wrong? I mean... like Imagine if I find out that I am predominantly British... That's disgusting. I don't want to be British. Uh, so 23andMe was actually, they, they closed 23andMe because of, their, I'm assuming because of that. But I used Ancestry DNA, and Ancestry is pretty reputable. I mean, they have a lot of other services that are reputable. So, like, I mean, take it for what it's worth, but Ancestry DNA, it, it seems to be doing just fine. I mean, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I just sent a picture of that uh, other folding gun I was telling you about. Oh, you might yeah, be a yeah. little familiar with it because they used it in one of the Call of Duties. Yeah, Modern Warfare 3. I can't remember what they call it in that, but you could dual wield them and fucking stupid ass people would dual wield them and somehow dominate games. I mean, the thing looks good, you know? Yeah. It's very sci fi looking. And folded up, it's just a little black box with a handle. I like that. It's not going to fit in a pocket, but, you know. If I'm right. going to be bringing a folded gun to a gunfight, then I might as well bring one that looks cool. Hey, yeah, I mean, that could fit in a pocket if you have, like, a, if cargo, you have like pants. cargo shorts. Yeah, like cargo shorts on. Which... Cargo shorts. Of course, I... you would say shorts. Listen, <laughs> cargo shorts are very comfortable. They're very accessible. I don't care what people say. They could make fun of me, but I like cargo shorts. They, they fit me well. Anyway. Just like the British, I will rail on you all day for being a cargo shorts. Hey, we should probably c- cut it off there because we are about 40-ish minutes into this and we're supposed to be the speed cast boy. I'm fast as fuck boy. Um, but, um, Killer Kingstar. Uh, have you ever seen that, that meme where he's like running? He's like, I'm fast as fuck boy. Unfortunately, I have. I am... <laughs> Very familiar with what you're talking about. And what's his opening? Is like, Killer Keemstar, let's get right into the news, or whatever bullshit he says, including racism. And <laughs> Yeah, I was like, can't forget the racism. <laughs> can't forget the racism. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's episode of Control Over C, give us a like and a subscribe. Follow us on social media. And if you'd like to send Salsa and I... Um, recommendations for your favorite firearms, or if you like to tell us how much of a fucking idiot we are, 
Follow us on Twitter. That's in the description down below and at the end of the video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay awesome, and salsa blows us out. Man, you really don't give me much time to say at the end of this. Uh... Nah, man, you gotta you gotta think on your feet, boy. You gotta be fast as fuck, boy, just like Kingstar, Killer Kingstar. Well, if I gotta think like Kingstar, then I'm going to accuse you of being a pedophile with absolutely no evidence. And then when you prove me wrong, I'm just going to ignore you and then block you on Twitter. That's my advice for today. Just don't be Keemstar.